What time is it? It's tech time. Today we're looking at a 2007 Freightliner XC chassis, so a little bit different than the F53 and Sprinters we're typically looking at. But we do actually offer quite a bit for the diesel pusher coaches, and the Freightliner XC is really one of the most common chassis used on that type of platform. So we're just going to do a walkthrough front to rear on the different characteristics of this coach and some of the upgrades on it. So let's take a look. So first thing you'll notice looking at the front suspension on this is that it does have the independent front suspension. This is the ZF independent front suspension. And this is an interesting design where you've actually got the steering gear located in the middle of that front suspension area. And so you don't have your typical drag link coming back. Instead, you've got your pitman arm connecting directly to the steering gear. Your tie rods connecting directly to that pitman arm and then over to your steering arms. And then your, your steering input shaft to the gear comes down here toward the gear, goes up to what's known as a, a miter box or a 90 degree box here, and then goes up to your steering wheel there. So generally, these are a very good front suspension. We're typically not seeing a lot of play, a lot of issues in them, not as much as you might see on some of the straight axle coaches. So it is important to note that the Freightliner XC chassis does come with really several different front suspension options. The larger ones were made with the ZF independent front suspension, and this ZF front suspension is still being used on the Freightliner XC chassis. There's also just your traditional cast I-beam solid front axle of suspension. Within that, there are some variations with the bell crank used. Some have the, the more problematic three bolt bell crank where you get some play there. Others use the four bolt. And then more recently, Freightliner has come out with the VFS solid front axle suspension that uses its own upgrades and just a different, more improved design compared to that I-beam suspension. Important to know what front suspension your particular coach has if it is a Freightliner especially. Even before the ZF independent front suspension was used, they also had a, an earlier model, the New Way independent front suspension as well. If there's ever any questions about that, feel free to give us a call or check out our chassis solution center so you can get a little more details on that. So anyway, getting back to this particular model of suspension, the ZF IFS, it's worth noting that this is also used on the Tiffin Power Glide diesel pushers. And the Power Glide is fairly similar to a Freightliner XC with the IFS. Just a few variations there, but looking at the front suspension, overall layout's very similar. One thing that if you have these, we do recommend you check is making sure that your steering gear is completely secure to this mounting plate. Where it sits, we have seen a few of these in rallies with these bolts either loose or far enough backed off where the gear is halfway fallen off. This particular coach did not have that issue. And it's been, seems to be more so on the power glides versus the Freightliner XCs that we've seen that. But either way, it is something that I would recommend you check just to make sure. So looking at the upgrades we've installed here, you'll probably notice we've got some Kony Evo shock absorbers. So these are our Kony 99B3262 big bore shocks. So those are really going to cut down on the, the bounce, the porpoising, the nose dive. We did a little test before and after. We'll actually we'll cut to that footage showing the, the nose dive before and after getting these conies installed. diving yeah that's the point we also got our motion control units installed so those are the restrictors that go in line with the airbags to cut down on that flow of air just to slow it down coming in out of the bags so that's going to cut down on that nose dive that porpoising as well it's also going to cut down on the slow speed sway and rocking now i will point out that this is where one of the differences between the Power Glide and the Freightliner XC come in. So the Freightliners, whether they're a solid front axle or an IFS, seem to fairly consistently run a half inch outer diameter tubing for your airlines. And on those, you would use the SSE6065 MCUs. So that's what's installed here. 
On the power glides, those are typically running a 3 8 outer diameter of airline front and rear. So in that case, for the front of a power glide, you would use the SSE5055 MCU. I do also want to point out, since we're talking about MCUs, that with those, it's you want to make sure that the coach does not have an electronic leveling system that can interfere with the operation of those MCUs. So an easy way to tell is by looking, do you have mechanical ride height valves or the ride height sensors? So here you can see the airlines actually running out from this. So this is a true ride height valve, not a ride height sensor. What you would see if it were a ride height sensor is that there would be no airlines connected to it. Instead, you would just have a harness with wires going to it. So that would tell you that, okay, you probably have a, an electronic leveling system, such as the valid, I believe it's the, the valid true line system. And that's actually continuously running while you're driving the coach. And that can interfere. Just adding that restriction from the MCUs can cause them to hunt for the correct ride height. So we don't recommend MCUs in those cases. But again, on this coach, it does not have that system. So it's not an issue. Now we can take a look at the Safety Plus steering control. So this is the 42270 along with the ZF-1003 K2.5 mounting kit. The way this mounts is a little bit unique. It's actually going from the pitman arm to the tie rod here. So both ends are moving. You're just, you are still getting some relative distance increasing and decreasing depending on which way you're cutting the wheel. So it took some clever engineering from Safety Plus to get this to fit, but what does that do for you? But first, it provides blowout protection. So in the event of a front tire blowout, that Safety Plus is helping to absorb that impact and help keep your wheels pointed straight ahead. So you're not going to have quite the same difference in center point feeling as what you might have on a straight axle coach, but it does still provide improvement in that area as well, in addition to that safety aspect. All right, so now let's move our way to the rear suspension on the coach. Here we are at the rear of the coach. So this being a 2007, this uses the new egg rear suspension. And we, we call it the open trailing arm. So you can see just how, you know, you've got that gap between the two sides at each arm. And on that most prominent, you can see we've added our SS237 rear sway bar. So this is a fairly simple install. It's not necessarily an easy install because you're dealing with some very large bolts where you need to get like a three quarter inch, at least impact wrench to get those things loose. And then really a lot of torque to get them tightened back down. But what this bar does, it just bolts from one side to the other on your trailing arms. And so just as with any sway bar, as these are moving up and down, the bar is just moving freely. So it's not stiffening up your ride, but when you get into a sway situation, when one one side, one of these arms is going down, the other is going up, that's putting this bar into a twist. And so the bar is helping to keep that coach more level, transfer that weight more from side to side, and just maintain better control. I can step back here as well and take a look at our shocks. These are the Kony Evo FSD, the 9905-1031. For the rear shock. So it's important to note that even with the variation that you have in front suspension on the Freightliner XT, the rear suspension shock absorbers stay constant, the same part number. So you can run either the 8805-1022 is the FSD, which have been around quite a while. Those are a good shot. Then Coney's latest and greatest is the 9905-1031, which is the bigger bore Evo. Up front, again, I mentioned we've got the, the 99B 3262 because this is a ZF IFS. If this were a straight axle, just your traditional cast I-beam, then you could run the 9905-1030. Those work very well, especially to cut down on the nose dive, which is really a problem on those, those older straight axle coaches, as well as controlling the sway, all while giving you a really nice ride. If your coach has that new VFS front suspension that I mentioned, then you can use our new 9905-1035, where you have a brand new offering from Kony of a front shock for the Freightliner XC with that VFS front suspension as well. Going back to the rear suspension, though, so we mentioned our rear sway bar, we mentioned our shocks. 
can get a look here. There we've got our motion controls in the back as well. So typically these Freightliner XTs, they're going to run a quarter inch outer diameter line until you get to, we get back to the 20 year old plus coaches. Sometimes we see those running a half inch outer diameter line as well. But most all of the Freightliner XTs that we're looking at do run that quarter inch outer diameter rear line. The one thing that you have to look for on the newer Tiffins especially, as well as some of the other models, is that some of them will run a T coming off the airbag on the passenger rear side. So in that case, instead of having to put a separate MCU on each branch, we have our SSE 4055T slash N. You can replace that brass T with an MCU and T integrated unit that actually screws into the top of the bag, and then you can just connect the two branches of the line to that to that MCU and T fitting assembly. On the left side, though, you would use the SSE 4055, just your standard MCU in that case. And that's what we've done on both sides here because it did not have the T, so it's just the SSE 4055 kit for both sides, just to, again, to cut down on that rocking and rolling, that sway. So that, that really does it for the Freightliner XC chassis. We mentioned the Power Glide chassis and its similarities and differences. So the Power Glide does use a different rear suspension. So some different parts, different shock absorbers used in those cases. Also, Freightliner more recently changed from the New Way style trailing arms to their newer V-Ride rear suspension. And uh, for that, again, the shock absorbers are the same. The MCUs are still going to be a quarter inch outer diameter, but there is a different sway bar that would be used. So in that case, it actually clamps to the trailing arms rather than bolts on the way the SS-237 does. So we hope all that's useful information for you about some of the upgrades available on the Freightliner XC chassis. Overall, the Freightliner really is a really nice driving diesel pusher. It's a very good service offering across the country with the Freightliner network. Certain areas of improvement can really be addressed with aftermarket components. Obviously, the steering side, if you've got the I-beam front suspension, Freightliner bell crank really helps it out a lot. Our SS100 3-bolt bell crank really takes care of a lot of that play and stiffness. With this being the ZF independent front suspension, not quite as much problems with steering, but you can still improve it with the Safety Plus, and then all the stability improvements that we've discussed as well. Again, we hope this was really helpful for you. If so, please like and subscribe. Please comment below. And we really encourage you to take a look at our Chassis Solution Center as well. If you want to get more detailed information like this for the Freightliner XC chassis or any other motorhome chassis, we still have some others in development. So please let us know what you would like to learn about in the comments below. Thank you very much. Until next time, we want to wish you safer and happier driving.